have about 14 question out of uh, 200 uh, in MRCP exam. So we'll be discussing the uh, neurology under the following he headings. So initially I'll discuss about the clinical implication of neuroanatomy and bit of neurophysiology, followed by disorders of the uh, brain, including intracranial bleed, stroke, epilepsy, Parkinsonism, dementia, other movement disorders, multiple sclerosis, some infection. Then we're going to discuss about brain stem disorders, then spinal cord disorder, then the peripheral uh, nervous system disorder, including uh, peripheral nerve, neuromuscular junction, and muscle disorders. And uh, we're going to conclude with few of the uh, miscellaneous topics like headache, uh, few of the important uh, uh, nerve pathology in the upper limb, and uh, driving and uh, uh, driving and the disease of the uh, brain. These are the topics which will be covered under two sessions. So let us begin uh, with the brief neuroanatomy. So we know the, we have two important system of the uh, part of the brain, a part of the nervous system. So nervous system is classically divided into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system consists of brain and spinal cord. Peripheral nervous system con consisting of cranial nerves and peripheral nerves. The uh, this brain uh, and the spinal cord. Uh, they're interconnected via multiple pathways, tracts. So we have ascending tracts and descending tracts. Basically, brain uh, receives the afferent signal from the periphery. For example, sensations such as touch, pressure, vibration from the... So these tracts which convey the sensory information from the peripheral organs or peripheral tissue, such as muscles, uh, skin, uh, tendon, joints, uh, to the brain, they're called as sensory tracts. These are ascending tracks. That means they travel from the periphery, enter the spinal cord, and relay in the brainstem or in the subcortical structure. And ultimately, they are going to get uh, relayed into the uh, cortex, sensory cortex. The uh, the motor pathway is opposite. So motor pathway is basically a descending track which originates in the cortex and passes to the brainstem spinal cord and uh, then continues with the lower motor neuron. So these are the descending tracks. There are two important tracks, ascending track, which are sensory, descending track, which are motor. Now, the two important ascending tract is, the one is called dorsal column pathway. Second is called as spinothalamic tract. So spinothalamic tract is mainly important for crude touch and pressure. Uh, we have two separate part of the spinothalamic, that's anterior and lateral. We do not differentiate these two for clinical purposes. Just remember spinothalamic tract, which is important for transmission of pain and temperature, crude touch and pressure. What we clinically test is mainly for pain and the temperature. So you just remember that spinothalamic tract is required for pain perception and temperature perception. Now, what is the pathway for the spinothalamic tract? So the spinothalamic fibers are basically entering the spinal cord from the peripheral nerves from the uh, from the dorsal root of the uh, spinal cord and once they enter into the uh, spinal uh, cord they have a synapse in the in the gray matter so this is a spinal cord spinal cord is divided into two parts the outer is the white matter inner one is the gray matter now white matter is made up of tracts that's why it's white in color because they're all myelinated the gray matter is made, made up of nuclei of a cell. All the nuclei, nuclei are nothing but collection of cell bodies of the neuron. So that's why it's gray in color. And remember, it's exactly the opposite of the brain. For example, in the brain, the gray matter is outside, white matter is inside. Whereas in the spinal cord, the gray matter is inside and the white matter is opposite in the outside. So the neurons, uh, the the neurons which carry the spinothalamic sensation or track enter the uh, the the dorsal root of the spinal cord they synapse in the um, in the gray matter in the uh, in the dorsal horn so this is called ventral horn this is called the dorsal horn uh, of the gray matters then they cause to the opposite side you can see here the second order neuron which is depicted in the yellow color it's going to cross to the opposite side and then ascend in the white matter okay now because why they're ascending in the white matter because it's a tract so it will be ascending in the white matter so it will ascend till the thalamus. Okay, in the thalamus we have multiple nuclei. So ventro posterior medial, ventro posterior lateral. So this it's uh, the spinothalamic tract usually synapses in the ventral posterior lateral thalamus nuclei. From that the third order neuron enters uh, and uh, um, the begins from the thalamus and they uh, basically innervate. They basically transmit the signal into the sensory cortex. 
So we have a sensory cortex, which is a, a part of the parietal lobe where the all the sensory information are going to get relayed. So this is the three order neuron system of the spinal thalamic tract. Now it's important for us from history point of view or examination point of view and in, in, in application of uh, this tract is that. So whenever you have damage to one uh, one segment of the spinal cord, like for example, if for example, let us say consider this part of the spinal cord is damaged. So it, it is cutting, it is basically breaking this part of the tract. So the damage or the loss of sensation in the opposite half, okay, that's what we need to remember because the tract what is being uh, damaged here is representing the sensation or carrying the sensation opposite half of the body. The only thing what you remember for your exams or, or, or practical purpose is that if you have a spinal thalamic tract damage, you're going to lose sensation in the opposite half of the body. That's the first thing what you should know. Second thing what you should know is what sensation are lost. It's pain and the temperature, which is lost on the opposite half of the body. So what will happen if you lose pain perception? So pain is a protective response to the body. So whenever, you, for example, if you have uh, touched a flame, uh, then what you'll feel quite hot the tip, uh, at the tip of your finger. Okay, and that what protects your body from the heat. If you don't, if you don't feel the pain, uh, it will it it will destroy or damage the tissue. Okay, so those patients who classically lose their sensation, what will happen? They have multiple burns in their fingertips. Okay, that's what classically seen in advanced peripheral neuropathy and some cases of what's called a syringomyelia. Okay, so. Another important thing what you should know from this uh, anatomy is that you the, the spinal thalamic tract is just crossing to the opposite side of the body in front of the central canal. Now, this is a central portion of the spinal cord, which is called central canal. It's basically a small hole in the center of the spinal cord, which is filled with the CSF. Now, we have a disease known as syringomyelia. Syringomyelia is a disease where the central canal enlarges and forms like a cavity. Okay, So, basically, central canal is expanding. It's forming a cavity. So, this... Uh, syringomyelia is going to destroy the destroy these uh, crossing fiber of spinothalamic tract. Now, once the spinothalamic tract damage, basically you're losing the sensation in the uh, in, uh, of the the uh, side which is affected. Okay, so so syringomyelia usually affects the intramedullary part or the central part of the spinal cord, and it can affect the spinothalamic tract sensation. These are the few clinical implications we should know for your exam. The second sensory tract which is important is the dorsal column. A dorsal column uh, is basically carrying the sensation of vibration, proprioception, and joint position sense. These are the three important sensory information which is related to the sensory cortex. Now, what's the uh, tract normally? So you get fibers which are entering the spinal cord again from the dorsal column, and they're going to get uh, um, projected into the nucleus cuneatus and nucleus gracilis this is present in the lower part of the medulla okay remember they do not synapse in the spinal cord which is unlike or contrary to the uh, spinothalamic tract. spinothalamic tract do relay here in spinal cord here there is no synapse they are going to ascend it laterally till the uh, lower end of the medulla where they are going to uh, anastomose or synapse with the uh, gracilis, gracilis and cuneatus gracilis is the medial tract cuneatus is the lateral tract Basically, what you should remember is the, the lower limb, uh, the lower limb sensation are basically carried by the gracilis, upper limb, uh, and the upper part of the trunk by the cuneators. Now, in the lower part of the medulla, they are going to cross to the opposite side. Once they cross to the opposite side and they ascend ipsilateral, that is known as medial lemniscus. Okay. So this is a medial lemniscus which ascends up to the thalamus, again synapse in the ventral, posterior, lateral nucleus of thalamus, and from there they relay into the sensory cortex. Sensory cortex is labeled. Uh, Broadman area 312. Okay. Now, this is the depiction of the uh, of the um, of the dorsal column. So it's also called DCML system, DC for dorsal column, ML for medial lemniscus. So DCML system. So this is important for proprioception, joint positions, and vibration. Now coming to the clinical implication of this pathway or this anatomy. So if you again, if you're going to lose one half of the spinal cord, it is going to cause damage to the ipsilateral fibers only. So for example, you have a hemisection in the spinal cord, any pathology which damages the uh, the one half of the spinal cord, you lose sensation on the same side of the body. Which sensations are lost? Their proprioception, vibration, and joint position sense. But if you have a pathology on the brain stem, Suppose you have pathology in the brain stem, for example, any 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 pathology in the pons or the midbrain, and if it's going to uh, uh, damage the medial lemniscus, then it is going to have 
uh, loss of sensation the opposite half of the body okay so that is the significant pattern or arrangement of the fiber we know that the we carry sensation and uh, sensations carry to the particular segment of the spinal cord the spinal cord can be divided into a uh, four segment one is called cervical second segment is thoracic third is lumbar fourth is sacral okay now when the in the dorsal column system which is carrying vibration proprioception and joint position joint position sense you see that the sacral fibers are the most medial medial most the laterally are the we have the uh, lumbar then thoracic and cervi cervical so this is the arrangement of the uh, dorsal column in the uh, in the spinal cord what about the arrangement in the spinothalamic tract in the spinothalamic tract those fiber which carry the uh, pain in temperature sensation from the cervical part of the spinal cord they are more medial okay you can see they can appreciate the difference in the dorsal column cervical fibers are lateral most whereas in spinothalamic tract cervical fibers are medial meet are the medial then we have the thoracic lumbar and the sacral so we have the the arrangement is exactly opposite to each other now what is the clinical implication so uh, when you have any pathology of the central part of the spinal cord, such as syringomyelia, uh, what is going to it's going to affect the cervical fibers first. So usually, patients with syringomyelia have upper limb symptoms. Okay, they usually have loss of sensation in the upper limb. Okay, so and uh, so and the uh, they also have motor symptoms such as uh, atrophy of the muscle fibers. Again, it's more common in the upper limbs. So these are the two sensory tracts which you know. The third was the descending of the motor tract. Okay. Now, motor tract usually originates from the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is made up of six layers. In the fifth layer, we have a cell called pyramidal cell or also called BET cell, B-E-T-Z, BET cell. Uh, this is a cell which gives to a motor neurons or motor fibers. <clears throat> so these motor fibers from the different part of the motor cortex are going to pass. They pass through a space between the uh, basal ganglia and the thalamus. Okay, that space is known as internal capsule. So internal capsule is a condensed space where the most of the descending and the ascending tracts are passing uh, through the uh, very narrow channel. Now, once they pass the internal capsule, they descend ipsilaterally, pass to the midbrain, then the uh, pons and the medulla. So these are three parts of the brainstem, uppermost the midbrain, the middle is called pons and lowermost is called medulla. Again, in the lower end of the medulla, they are, the, most of the corticospinal fibers, they, these fibers are corticospinal, also called motor fibers. They're going to cross to the opposite side of the body and they're going to descend contralaterally. So they're going to descend contralaterally. They pass through the white tract and they're going to get synapsed into the anterior horn cells. Okay, anterior horn cells are the cells which are present in the, the gray matter, the anterior horn of the spinal cord. So remember here, so any pathology in the brainstem, okay, what will happen? For example, you have pathology in the brainstem, maybe midbrain or pons. You are you are basically, if the, this corticospinal tract is damaged, you are going to have effect on the opposite side. Okay, that is the reason. If somebody has a left cerebral hemorrhage, left cerebral infarct, uh, then you'll have de then you'll have the deficit on the opposite side. Okay, this is because till the lower end of the medulla, they, they are they. Uh, if you have any pathology in any uh, site above the medulla, you are going to have deficit on the opposite side of the body because these fibers are basically supplying motor. Uh, motor fibers to the opposite half of the body. Okay, so this is the clinical significance of corticospinal uh, fibers. Again, we have division anterior corticospinal, lateral corticospinal. This is not required, so most of them are usually lateral corticospinal fibers. <clears throat> 